Hello there, wastrels and or witchers. I'm Kato Genesis, and I figured since The Witcher has gotten a little bit of a resurgence, thanks to the Netflix series, relevance is spiking, and I have enjoyed The Witcher series myself, so I figured it's best to do a uh, tips and tricks or entry level things I wish I knew about The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. This video is mainly for those who have seen the show or read the books and want to jump into the games as well. But if you happen to be a veteran of the Witcher games, I am certain you have some valuable advice that you can share to new players as well. And I invite you to do that. So let's begin with this many things that I wish I knew when I first started playing The Witcher 3. The first thing I'd like to say, and probably many other fans of the Witcher series will tell you this too, is you don't need to play The Witcher 1 and 2 to enjoy The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Despite a lot of characters returning from the previous games, this is still its own self-contained story. And there is a character glossary in your menu, which is a valuable resource in learning more about the characters, how they relate to Geralt, and their history. I will mention though that the wars going on, several other key characters that begin to appear, all can be a bit overwhelming. But there is a point after the White Orchard segment, where you are eventually told to speak with a Nilfgaard ambassador about the war, and it's got a whole map and everything to give you a bit more context. Getting into the world and its events was the hardest part for me personally, but I'm also happy to say that this time I spent learning more about it was not wasted and enriched my experience the second time through. So best I can suggest here is give it some time. One of the incredible traits about the Witcher series is its consequences and situations being much less black and white. When dealing with a quest or a contract, you will receive a constant reminder that people in the Witcher universe have their own motivations, and there can be more than just one reason why something is happening. You're introduced to this concept early in White Orchard if you decide to take up some of the local quests, and this theme doesn't stop as the game progresses. The stakes can get higher, the gray choices get more gray somehow. Despite being a supposed neutral party, you will have to make vital decisions that change the lives of people in this world. This next one's a tip based on preference. The first game in the Witcher series came out on PC and Mac, meaning mouse and keyboard controls. For me personally, action RPGs and third person action games are better played with a controller. The first time I picked up The Witcher 3, it was with mouse and keyboard, but it simply felt like there was too many inputs to keep track of, and switching to a controller fixed most of that for me. So if you are having a problem like I did with getting into the rhythm of the controls of The Witcher 3, on PC that is, give a controller a try. The main character you play as in the Witcher series is Geralt of Rivia, mutated monster hunter extraordinaire. A big part of the monster slaying profession is preparation, and should not be overlooked. This is where alchemy, signs, and the bestiary all come in. When you are tracking, reading about, or slaying particular monsters, it can show up in the bestiary with an illustration of what they look like, a short description, and their weaknesses. The bestiary will sometimes suggest certain spell signs to be used alongside oils and potions. If nothing else, double check the bestiary every so often so you know what to do when you encounter a specific foe. Witchers wield simple magic spells in the form of five signs. Erdin makes an ensnaring ring around where it was cast, very effective against wraiths. Quen will keep you protected, it's a protective shield spell. Igni is a short range blast of fire, especially effective against anything that can burn and things that like to eat the dead. Axie is used for influencing minds, for incapacitating foes in combat and getting information through dialogue. And finally, Ard is a telekinetic blast, which can stagger and knock down foes as well as get pesky debris and doors out of your way. Oils are a bit more specific and can be applied to a weapon to increase its damage against a certain type of foe. After creating these oils from various reagents and creature parts, the oil itself is infinitely reusable and when applied to a blade can be used for so many strikes until the oil needs to be applied again. As you know, I'm sure anything that increases damage against a particular enemy that we're going to be fighting is good, so that's mainly what you can expect to use oils for. Potions and decoctions are consumables that are created through alchemy, and can be replenished with alcohol every time you meditate. 
Like oils, this prevents you from having to make them from scratch every single time. Potions affect Geralt's general performance in a task, from healing to improving senses to making Geralt's attacks more powerful, but because of how the toxicity system works, you can't just down a ton of these potions and expect to be okay. So it's good to bear in mind when you're using potions that they will help you in your current task, and be deliberate in the ones you choose. Just another aspect of improving your odds in succeeding in slaying whatever beast that you're against. Speaking of preparation, weapons and armor do have durability. Finding an armor or blacksmith when they need repaired, or repair tools to do on the fly, are both fairly important to keep track of. But another thing you might find near a blacksmith or armorer is the grindstone and or armor bench. Quickly using the grindstone and armorer's bench will increase your weapon and armor's effectiveness by 20% each for 15 minutes. These are substantial boosts especially if you're struggling in combat encounters. Equipment maintenance is good while it does cost a little bit of gold, but the temporary buffs from the workbench and grindstone are such a great benefit to pass up the price of free. When you discuss a bounty with a client, sometimes you're able to haggle for a better deal, displayed in dialogue by a handshake icon. The concept of this is simple and straightforward. Ask for too much of a bonus, and the client will start to get annoyed. But they will also help indicate how much lower you'll need to go in order to reach a new agreement, sometimes giving you a generous amount of tries to get that little extra gold. If you have the option of haggling, definitely go for it. Witchers are in it for the coin after all, right? Those familiar with role-playing games will probably find the character menu pretty straightforward. For the rest, here's a minor breakdown. You can gain ability points by leveling up and utilizing places of power around the map. These ability points can be spent on unlocking abilities, and the categories for these abilities are Combat, Signs, Alchemy, and General. Every few levels, you unlock a new ability slot, in which you can equip the abilities you unlock. Each of the abilities you purchase are inactive until you slot them in. The diamond slots are where you place mutagens, that is the gray tab in the ability tabs. Mutagens are gained from slaying monsters. Each mutagen has a color, red, blue, and green, corresponding to the ability categories. General skills, of course, don't have a brown mutagen because all of them only have one rank and their effects differ so greatly. Let's say you've purchased and equipped some sign abilities, which are blue. Slotting in a blue mutagen next to them improves sign intensity by quite a lot, because all three slots are taken up by blue abilities. Overall, you can build your Geralt however you see fit, but matching a mutagen to the same colored abilities will give you great passive bonuses. Thanks to his mutations, Geralt can sense things that others can't. This is called your Witcher Sense. Its uses include tracking monsters, locating loot, and solving puzzles. Generally, things you can interact with are highlighted in yellow. When the highlight is red, however, that means it serves some importance to the current quest, the plot, or is a new discovery. Most I use the Witcher Sense for is scanning rooms for lootable objects. When it comes to looting and inventory management, the capacity you start the game with can fill up relatively quickly. There is a general ability called Strong Back that greatly increases your carry capacity at the cost of unlocking with an ability point and equipping via the character window. Keep an eye out for saddlebags that you can equip to Roach to increase your capacity. These can be found from certain vendors or rewarded from horse races. And there's also the stash indicated by a green icon, usually only a few per main zone. It's not all about capacity though, of course, it's about the weight of the things you decide to carry carry too. Nearly all alchemical reagents, potions, oils, and food all weigh nothing. Weight that does pile up if you're into taking everything not nailed down is weapons, armor, and things that you would find in the other tab, like animal hides for example. If you are weighed down, these are likely to be your main offenders. Your quick select for items is exactly that. It shows up on the lower left hand side of the heads up display and is mainly used for consumables. The game starts you off with two food in these slots, but in reality you only need one. So what I recommend here is one food, one potion that heals, like swallow for example, and then two other utility related potions. This mainly just saves you time going back into your main menu every single time you need to use something. Also, if it's your last food item being used, the game will auto-replace it with another food item you have. Which is another reason why I say you don't need multiple slots of food. 
Speaking of food, there is an ability that makes it infinitely more useful, and that would be the Gourmet General Skill, or also sometimes called the Balanced Diet Skill if you're looking at the strategy guide. This dramatically increases the duration that food is actively healing you, both conserving the amount of food you have and keeping you alive in a passive way. The Gourmet ability is what I strongly recommend using your first level up on. When you discover or clear a new area, make sure you're looking around for chests in particular because they can contain diagrams, manuscript pages, and other things like that that can teach you new formulae for alchemy, even improve upon what you already know, and give armor and weapon plans that you can take to a blacksmith or armorer and have them made. Throughout The Witcher 3, you will also learn about the other Witcher schools and diagrams that you can collect to create their gear for yourself. But of course, you need to find them first. So keep an eye out, use those Witcher senses. In spite of Geralt being a pretty powerful mutant, fall damage will kill him just like anyone else. Because there's a certain lack of precision in the game's controls, it's very important that you're mindful of the ledges you're next to. This can go into advising you to save often as well. It doesn't take much of a drop to kill Geralt. That's all I was trying to say. Beware of fall damage. A lot of the tips that have been mentioned in this list can be learned through the game itself. But like me, all players have a different focus when they start playing a game for the first time. So these ones I also wanted to point out as the more important aspects. But there is plenty to learn about this game, so if you have any recommendations, those of you familiar with The Witcher 3, please leave your advice below in the comments to help out others. If you found these tips and tricks useful, entertaining, or a little bit of both, you can do whatever you see fit to show that. Special thanks to Tony Mo, whom I consulted for ideas, as well as Wasteland Legend Sven, a longtime supporter on Patreon and a valuable source of Witcher info. If you yourself would like to support the channel, the Patreon link is here and in the description. Doing so will grant you perks, including being on the on-screen credits. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and I hope you take care of yourself.